Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be doing the anti-TBR tag. I will leave the original creator of this tag, as well as Kieran, who very kindly tagged me, linked down below in the description so you can check out their videos. This is a tag all about the books that you do not want to read and I had a bit of trepidation going into this tag. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it and let me try and explain to you why. So this is like me overthinking. But I work in the publishing industry, as you may know, it is my con intention to progress with my career in the publishing industry for many decades to come. And I don't always want to like slag off books or slag off authors in these videos because I'm very aware that, you know, I might work with those authors one day. Now this channel is very small, like even in the grand scheme of booktube, this is like a very modest audience, which I really like. Most of the videos I make have a shelf life of about a week and then nobody watches them again. So the likelihood of there being a scenario where someone was like, oh, you slagged off X author in 2020. Like that's just not, that's, that's not a thing. But in saying that it is something that I do think about, you know, with th like this channel is completely separate to what I do for work. I do talk about books that are published by the company I work at on this channel, but like it is separate to what I do for work. But because what I do for work is books, I wouldn't want to say or do anything on this channel that I wasn't comfortable with anyone that I work with or anyone that I could potentially work with in the future seeing it. And you know, I talk about books in quite a personal way on this channel, so there isn't much that would fall under that category of like me not wanting someone I work with to see this. Like there's really very little there, but I do, like it is something that I just bear in mind. And that's not to say I like don't give books negative reviews. There have been numerous books, you know, throughout my booktube life throughout the past year where I have given them negative reviews because that's just the nature of how this is going to happen. But I don't, I don't find it productive to kind of blatantly slag books off. I think people have, you know, such short attention spans, you know, there are only so many YouTube videos you can watch. There are only so many books you can hear about. I would rather elevate books that I enjoyed than spend time talking Talking about books that I don't like and that is something I feel about you know traditional forms of media you know if you've got a, a, a newspaper review of a book I think it's more productive to you know devote that space to elevating books rather than slagging books off but in saying that I'm gonna do the tag so <laughs> so the first question is a popular book that everyone seems to love but you have no interest in reading what is that book called the boy the boy <laughs> the boy the mole the boy the mole the fox and the horse this was huge this was especially huge last Christmas and like lots of people got gifted it for Christmas and I feel like it's probably gonna have like another resurgence with gifting season coming up up and I don't I don't get it <laughs> I don't even really know what this book is and I don't I don't really I don't. just because something isn't for you though that doesn't mean it's bad because it's hugely popular and I don't get it like I'm I'm probably the weird one here the next question is a classic book or author that you have no interest in reading this one I can say without shame why read Ulysses why? I'm such a huge advocate for amazing Irish writing so I think a lot of people really assume that I'm really into James Joyce and I've read Ulysses. I have not read Ulysses. I have read Dubliners and I've read Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. The latter of which is probably my favourite Joyce that I've read but I have absolutely no interest whatsoever in reading Ulysses. It's too long. It's just about a bloke walking around Dublin. I can do that. And the thing that really puts me off reading Ulysses is the people that tell you that you should read Ulysses. And I'm just gonna say, not all Ulysses fans, hashtag not all Ulysses fans, but nine out of 10 people who recommend that you read Ulysses or talk about how much they've enjoyed reading Ulysses, wankers. Like, is there a person who's more annoying than the kind of person who is like, well actually, <laughs> Ulysses is great for this reason and this reason. I'm sure it is, but I don't care. So many people that like Ulysses make it a fucking personality trait, you know? Life's too short, just read something else. <laughs> the next question is an author or specifically a problematic author that you have no interest in reading books from. I mean, aside from the obvious one, um, you could not pay me to read a David Williams book, I'm afraid. And that's one of the ones I probably shouldn't speak about much more 
more, but you know. And the next question is an author that you've read a couple of books from, but you don't really think their books are for you. This for me is probably Matt Haig. I've read a couple of his fiction books and one of his non-fiction books. And after I'd read the couple of the non of the fiction books, I realized that his writing style just wasn't for me. And I, even if the premise of his novel sounds intriguing to me, which they always do, I probably shouldn't read it because I will just give it a negative review. Just because the style is not for me. I find with Matt Haig's books, he's sometimes really heavily trying to hand you the moral or the message of the book, which isn't something that I particularly enjoy. But he's a hugely popular author, so like I could tell when I was reading his books that so many people would love them, but they just weren't for me. The next question is a genre that you have no interest in reading or a genre that you've tried to get into but just couldn't. This for me I think will always be high fantasy. I do not care about things that have like elves and dwarves and complex magic systems. I don't have the imagination for it, like I really don't. <laughs> I'm always so envious of people who can really get into high fantasy though because they always seem like so absorbed in this magical world but I just can't, I cannot, cannot wrap my head around it. Also I just have a personal problem with big books. I can't ever see there being a reasonable explanation for a book to be over 400 pages. I realise this is a me problem. <laughs> but yeah, high fantasy. I just, I can't. The next question is a book you've bought but you are not interested in reading. So <laughs> let's talk about the Penguin English Libraries. I feel like I need to accept that my devotion to buying the Penguin English Library books are vanity purchases. <laughs> I intend to read every single one of these books in my lifetime. I really do. This is something that I want to do over the course of many, many years. It's like a lifetime goal. It's not an imminent goal, but there's one of them in particular. It's Moby Dick. You might be noticing a theme here in just me talking about big books that I don't want to read. Moby Dick is another one though where I'm just like, the people who love it often annoy me. And again, not all Moby Dick fans, but some of them. Another one, a more contemporary book I suppose, is Arcadia by Ian Pierce. I picked this up before I really knew my own reading tastes, I think. My perception of this book is that it's long and difficult and that like the world of the novel is quite difficult to wrap your head around. If you've read this book, I would love to hear your thoughts on it because <sighs> I do want to read it, but I just don't know if I ever will. The next question is a series you have no interest in reading or a series you started and have not finished. There are a few series I've abandoned over the years. The Mercy Falls series, the Red Queen series. Series where when I started reading them, they kind of aligned with my reading tastes, but in the time it took me to get towards the end of the series, my reading tastes had changed. But I think the one that really stands out for this question is definitely A Song of Ice and Fire. I read the first book, A Game of Thrones, and I did enjoy it. I listened to it on audiobook alongside reading it which really helped me get through such a big novel but as I've said you know big books are not my thing, high fantasy books are not my thing and I really don't think I would have been able to finish that book if I didn't have the TV series as a point of reference. I think the first book and the TV series are quite close matches and as it gets further into the series they then start to deviate but I don't think I would have got through the first book if I didn't have the TV series as a point of reference and I just I don't have any interest in reading that series anymore. And the final question is a new release that you don't have any interest in reading. I think this is probably Richard Osman's book. I mean, it's been out a little while now, but Cozy Crime isn't really something that I'm that into. The reviews that I've heard of the book are kind of average, like, you know, it's a nice read, but you know, that's it. Which, you know, that is kind of what I would expect for a, a cozy crime debut, but I think because it's a name, like, a lot of people know really well, there are such high expectations put on it, and I just think, you know, the genre that it's in, what I've heard about the book, it's not really something that I would be interested in. I'm a huge Richard Osman fan, though, like, House of Games, best quiz show on telly. So that's it, they are all the questions in this tag. I'm not gonna tag anyone specifically to do this, but if it sounds interesting to you, consider yourself tagged. Do leave me a comment down below if you want to talk about anything I've mentioned in this video, or if you don't have anything specific you want to say, just leave me a little emoji so I know you're here. I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you in my next video.